Hello all and welcome to a video I never thought I'd be making after almost two years of properly doing YouTube. My 10k subscriber Q&A special. Well, okay, let's change the name to my 15k subscriber special as it's a little bit late. Regardless, a huge thank you goes to all of you for the support you've been giving me the past two years that has helped me to turn my passion into a part-time job. So, I'm going to be breaking down this video into two parts. The first one is the more general questions, so the Q&A basically, and the second one is regarding some of my upcoming plans and what to expect from me and the channel going into 2024. Right, without further ado, let's get into the questions. So the first question I have is, what is your favourite route and journey you've done so far? To be honest, it's hard to pick a favourite, but one I was pleasantly surprised with was my railjet business class ride between Vienna and Venice via the Semmering Pass, which I did the other month. I did this ride when it was snowing in Austria too, so progressing further to Italy was like experiencing all four seasons in one day, and the business class is a fantastic product. Great staff and service, but more on this in a future video. What line is a must travel on in England, Scotland or Wales? In England, the South Devon Main Line is easily one of my favourites. Travelling along the Dawlish Seawall is great, especially during a nice sunny day. Scotland, the West Highland Line, one of the most scenic railway journeys in the world. And Wales, something I've yet to try and is on the to-do list, but the Heart of Wales Line from Shrewsbury to Swansea. It looks incredibly scenic and can't wait to do it in the near future. Okay, and here's a question I get asked a lot. Do I plan to do a face reveal? The answer to that is, not for now at least. I feel as though my style of video doesn't really warrant it, and I don't want to divert the attention of people from the main subject of the video, which is the train and the journey. Other YouTubers do it, which is fair enough, and it works for them, but personally, I don't see it working for me or my videos and style. At least not for now. Another question I commonly get is, what inspired you to start liking trains? Well, as most enthusiasts will say, I've always had an interest in trains, really. Back in the day, me, my dad and my brother would always go to Sheffield Station and just spend hours watching the trains go by, and I did, and still, own several models as a child. 2012 was when it became a hobby, though, when I came across models of a Class 170 and a Virgin Voyager in the now-defunct model zone on a family outing. I then went home and started researching and from then on I became gripped by the hobby and have never looked back since and here I am today still doing what I love and meeting the most incredible people and having amazing experiences which I get to share with you all almost weekly. If you could change how the UK railways are operated what would it be and why? <laughs> to be honest with you this would turn into a whole video if I was to go deep into this question but so many things. A key one is rail reform needs to happen to reduce ticket prices and make it more affordable. If you look at trains in many places in Europe as an example, it's so cheap most of the time to travel between key cities and even countries, whereas it can cost you in excess of £100 just to travel from London to Manchester, which is only two hours away. What is the worst rail service you have ever been on? I have to say Great Western Railway and Transport for Wales. Both use unsuitable stock, are subject to short formations and generally have poor value for money travel experiences. EMRs are close second with their grubby interiors. Feels like you can catch a disease just by sitting in their standard glass. Okay, do I plan to go to Switzerland? So I recently ended up going there for a few days on an interrail and I absolutely loved it. I do plan on going back again at some point next year, especially as I barely scratched the surface of their incredible rail network. If you had a chance to ride any train in the world for free, what train would you ride? The Venice Simplon Orient Express, easily. It just costs way too much from what my budget can afford at the moment. Okay, this is an interesting one. Apart from the Class 43s and 91s, what other train would you recommend people to ride on in the UK? I definitely recommend the Stad the Flirt trains of Greater Anglia and Transport for Wales, but the irony is I've not actually reviewed those on the channel yet. The videos will be coming soon. Additionally, I would also recommend Chilton Railways Class 68 and Mark 3 sets, which have a nice secret for luxury travel, which as most of you know, I've covered before. What is the best trade operating company in Scotland? Scotrail easily. They by far have one of the best networks in the UK. Great and comfortable stock, 
frequent services and brilliant staff. It's also not directly controlled by the Department for Transport, so the operations are less subject to cuts operators in England have been facing. Oh, that and they of course have HSTs. Do I have plans for doing North American routes? Absolutely. My aim is to hopefully get out to America sometime soon, especially with the OG sellers expecting to be replaced soon by the Avalia Liberty in 2024. What operator provides your favourite first class? In the UK, it's a tie between LNER and Avanti West Coast. You know, when they work. Full meal services on board, exceptional staff and brilliant stock. Uh, in LNER's case when you don't get an Azuma. In Europe, it's easily Freccio Rossa. A proper service and it's like you're experiencing a plane's business class at ground level. What's your favourite train livery? In terms of current UK operators, I'd have to say Transpennine Express. It has so much more personality compared to the bland white liveries most operators use these days and really suits the stock they operate to give them a more premium feeling. Elsewhere in the world, going against myself here, but the ICE livery, as well as the Freccia Rossa livery, both are very smart and striking. What do you believe is the most overrated and underrated trains still used around the UK? Overrated, I would say, is the Caledonian Sleeper. For what it offers, it's definitely not worth the high prices it demands, and the quality of the Mark V coaching stock is abysmal. Underrated, I would say Chilton Railways. Excellent service and comfortable stock, though it is a shame their rolling stock situation is so poor. They have so much potential. What is your favourite station to train spot at in the UK and why? Okay, so this is actually one of the most difficult questions to answer, given I have so many on my list. But a few favourites are South Kenton on the West Coast Main Line, Biggles Wade on the East Coast Main Line, Bedford on the Midland Main Line, and Queenstown Road, a stop before Clapham Junction. So, when am I going to try and make ad videos of the AVE network in Spain? So, several videos have already gone up already of Spain's high speed trains, one of which is on the AVE S103 non stop from Madrid to Barcelona, which I've linked above now. I have recordings of all of the operators on Spanish high speed rail, so AVE, Avlo, Wigo, and Erio. It really is interesting there with the liberalisation of the high speed rail market now, and the fares are relatively cheap if you book in advance, which is how rail travel should be. Will I review the London Underground S stock? Uh, sorry about that, I have no immediate plans in the future, but never say never. Uh, what are my thoughts on Greater Anglia trains now versus a decade ago? I'd say it's a huge improvement now. A lot of the stock was run down and outdated before the new stock came in, so the fleet replacement was long overdue. However, the 379s going was a mistake in my opinion, and the 720s really need interiors you can easily walk through. What's my favourite train operator? I would have to say Swiss Federal Railways and Erio are two personal favourites. Both have been absolutely brilliant when I use them and the stock and service are both amazing. Favourite train you have ever ridden? So in the UK it would have to be Eurostar's TMST sets in the old interior and the new standard and business premier. Easily the comfiest seats around. And as for outside of the UK, it would be the Freccia Rossa 1000. The ride quality on board them is amazing, and they certainly look the part. Who would have thought Bombardier and Hitachi could make such a great train? Are you considering doing coach and ferry videos? Well, not directly. To be honest, I don't really have that much interest in other modes of transport outside of railway based ones. And with my videos, I always like to stick to things that I myself am interested in trying or want to do. That being said, some of the videos I have planned for next year do involve some other forms of transport as well as trains, so stay tuned! Who's my favourite train YouTuber? Uh, I heard that Paul's trip reports is meant to be alright. He's got a few thousand subscribers, so you've probably heard of him, right? Who's your favourite Midlands based enthusiast? Uh, I'm not sure I've heard of this Midlands place. Are you sure it even exists? Will this question make it in the video? I don't know. You tell me. Do you enjoy elephants? Of course, especially white elephants. If a tree falls in the woods and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? Yep, I'd say so. Not all noises are heard. What is your favourite thing to do in your free time? 
Minus the railways and travelling, I ironically game a lot with my Nintendo Switch. I also like to spend time with friends and family and play sports such as badminton. Who is my favourite UK rapper? Easily M. Honcho. He goes in hard, man. Okay, I think I'll leave it there. Sorry to those I didn't get a chance to answer, and thank you to those who sent questions through. Now as promised, I'll be sharing some of my plans with you for the coming year, both in terms of the channel and a few upcoming trips. So my aim for the next year is to push myself to go to places I've not yet been to, and expand the channel beyond the content I normally deliver. That doesn't mean just in terms of where I get the content from, I'm also aiming to upload content similar, but different to trip reports in 2024, such as races and point-to-point -point journeys. Some have already been filmed, whilst I have more I'm planning to film in the future, of course once I've actually allocated the time to do it. As for where I'm planning on going, I'm hoping to make it to the Nordics at some point this year and finally check out the railways in some of those countries. The main ones I'm hoping to visit are Norway and Sweden, which should be great despite the extremely cold climates. I'm also hoping to make it to Turkey, which has a fair amount of high speed trains out there, including their own variant of the Siemens Velaro, which I'm excited to try. Oh, and speaking of high speed trains, I also have two big trips planned outside of Europe. I'm hoping to finally make it to Japan after planning it for the best part of last year and having it on my to-do list for literally ages. I also plan to go to Saudi Arabia, having made plans to go last year, but was sadly not able to make the time for it, where the main highlight is to try the Haramain high-speed railway between Mecca and Medina, something you most definitely don't want to miss. I'll also be out on the road again in January to address some content gaps and changes within the European and UK rail systems. I'm finally going to be trying the new Eurostar Red and having a go on Grand Central's new Voyagers too, so I'm rearing to go for 2024 and I'm incredibly excited for what's to come on the channel, and I hope you are too. Well that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. I don't want to give too much away at this stage, but do stay posted for all of this and more exciting content to come to the channel in 2024. I'd also like to thank you all so much for watching and for the ongoing support this year. It's very humbling to see so many people enjoy my content and I hope to provide more of it as the years go by. I'll see you all again for my first video of 2024 next week. So for now, happy holidays, thanks so much for watching and all the best for the year ahead. Bye for now.